All right. Hey, guys. Welcome back to the What Podcast. I'm Barry. That's Brian. That's Lord Taco. We know him also as Russ with the bus. I want to do a quick sort of uh, bring everybody up to speed. It, it occurs to me every week that we not only have new listeners, but that Bonnaroo has new people coming. I think half the people are first timers. So I wanted to do sort of a here's why we're doing this and here's who we are. I'm Barry. Like I said, I used to work at the Chattanooga Times Free Press, did entertainment reporting. Part of that was covering Bonnaroo. I attended the first one in 02, and then I've been going every year since 07. Brian, you've attended every single one of them. Russ, your first one was in 19. We are... No, 2018. Um, 18. That's what I thought. You said 19 earlier. And you confused me. I thought it was 18. Well, it was 19 was my first year. That was my first year at Camp Nut Butter. But That's I right. In That's right. There you go. Yeah. Okay. He had to, Thank you for he had, he had to slum with the savages. As we yeah. Former terminology. <laughs> and I'm glad you yeah. mentioned Camp Nut Butter. Uh, you, if people who have listened to this show will have probably heard that reference. Um, my co-founder of the podcast, if you will, that sounds kind of highfalutin, Brad Steiner and I That's used true. to have... It's true. Mm-hmm. Had lunch every day, and uh, we realized we were talking about Bonnaroo all the time and realized probably other people were as well. His wife, Hillary, uh, made nut butter that first year, and it's just a funny word. And so <laughs> when we left there, uh, I said, I'll see you guys next year at Camp Nut Butter, and that stuck. And There you go. If you look right up here... These were sort of the original. Many of the uh, original members. Some of the originals. <clears throat> yeah. You got, uh, these are all, I was thinking about this, Brian. It, it's a lot of industry people, right? I mean, the uh, top over here, Chris Cobb. It's all stuff. industry people to a certain degree. If you, if you include, um, like, well, Joe was, is a beer guy. Hillary is, uh, in what was and is in a different capacity now, uh, herbal teas, um, and yep, then Denson, Denson works at the Tivoli Theater. The guy next to him, lower middle, Mike Dewar, runs, uh, he's run every club in town that's worth noting. Like I said, Chris Cobb is the, this, this guy owned the, anybody XN. in Nashville knows who Chris Cobb Everybody is. Everybody knows who Chris is. Uh, Nick in the middle top did all the design work, graphic design work, Sean yeah. Stewart. So, and that's Brad. So um, it did start off as just a core bunch of us who were in, in a lot of cases, working. Um, Brad, I was Brad. You, I mean Brad. But I sorry, was. my God, Barry. <laughs> you were working <laughs> wow. constantly. I was. It's, I'm, I'm jumping ahead of myself here. I was working regularly, and Brad was never, never working. working. He'd get on his phone and do a 15 <laughs> second. Hey, I'm at Bonnaroo. Bye. <laughs> never. And he was the biggest, he had the most influence within right. the organization. Then, and that's just how Brad rolls and good for him. And I would so often get so mad at him because he would throw something at me that might be a little work. Cause we had like some things. Cause I worked with him at a station for a short period of time, about two years, but we've known each other in the industry for closer to 20 now. And he would throw something, hey, uh, I need you to, or how about you go over here and meet them for this at four? I'm like, you know, I'm in the middle of something. I'm tired. I'm like, no, how about yeah. you do it? You're not doing anything. And I love to work at Bonnaroo. Barry, I know you do too. I love yep. to do it. And yeah, I love to have something to do. And so it started off as a bunch of people who really were, well, just, and this guy's high, sounds high fluent with the fluent, in, 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 uh, sorry, into the industry. High fluent. High fluent. <laughs> is um, we were on assignment, if you will. Right. Well, those days mostly are, mo- and we still do a little bit of here and there, and we try our best to keep keep some some things put together for this show later on and on all those things, but it's mostly just about having fun now. And then the group would right. just create, it would just, it would just start spreading the tentacles. We would bring in people from 100 miles each way, and it just turned into, we're going to Camp Nut Butter, and you know, half the people there don't know half the people there, but it didn't matter. You know, it, it, no, it didn't matter. And the reason I bring it up is multiple, just sort of a, a, to let people know why we're doing this and who we are and why we think we have an opinion and why we can have an opinion. Why there's yeah, a, I'm, a I'm little bit you, of credibility. Yeah, there. I'm Correct. glad you I'm glad you brought up the history because, uh, uh, by the way, happy 200th show, by the way. This is oh, the oh, 200th wow. show of, of right. the What Podcast. Yeah. 
We're uh, that's a good run. That's a good run. Uh, we we're, we're I'm half joking. We're we're getting pretty close to a million downloads. Uh, maybe is that over. That's stretching too much. Half a million. Uh, we're, we're over a half a million. Yeah. Maybe okay. if you combine with YouTube and all the other yeah oh well I'm, I'm combining them all counting everything yeah. we can count <laughs> okay <laughs> I'm I'm counting this list I made the other day of the people who told me they listened to it I'm good for a hundred thousand of them anyway but anyway so yeah the point is uh, we have a little bit you know I, I'd like to think we have a little bit of uh, credibility for somebody who's just joining and saying who are these who are these guys which uh, is a fair Fair question Absolutely. in the world of, of video cast. Who the, hell these, who the hell are these guys? Yeah, who is this? Yeah, and so um, Brad is uh, taking some time off. He's up in New York where he's running a cluster of radio stations, working for Howard Stern's old station. Yeah. Um, he's doing big-time stuff up there. Doing big-time stuff. You can find him. Search Brad Steiner. He's interviewing uh, lots of Done doing some great interviews. He had a throwaway with Glass Animals last week. I mean, I like know, right? it's like it, it, he was. Just, this was just one of those. Oh God, I got Glass Animals here in a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. All right, so, Brad. <laughs> I just wanted to uh, sort of recap that. Am I leaving anything out as far as that goes? But that's who we are, and that's why we're doing this. Uh, we love this festival. To your point. Brian, it, it is a little bit of industry inside stuff. That's what we've always, that was the premise. That's where um, it's mainly started and came from, but it's its still fan. We're just fans. You know? We're fans, but where we where we try to take it a little different is if we have a question, uh, we try to pick up the phone and get that person on the show. We try. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, to, to answer it, uh, whether it's founders of the festival who we've had or artists or... You know, the guy, the we've had the spicy pie guy on. That was a good one. That was fun. You know, we just, we're fans, and we like to approach it that way. So, um, wanted to start there. We, our guest today is the winner of our ticket giveaway. We have given away a pair of tickets every year since we've done this. And um, Lucy Young is our winner. She'll join us here in a little bit. Typical... She's a fan, right? She's just like us. She's mm -hmm. been there for since, yeah. what'd she say, 17? 17 20, and now 20, 17. 17 on, yeah. 13 hour drive and completely hooked. I was going to say, where she is different, you and I roll down the hill, she takes a 13 hour <laughs> drive. Um, she's also. <laughs> yeah, got, I don't know if I'm driving 13 hours for anything. Uh, uh, nope, not, not twice. No, that's tough, man. Not I twice. mean, I would have done it at you know twenty three, twenty four, twenty five years old, maybe. Which but she is. not, not neat. Well, yeah, she's she's yeah, she's in that in that range. Fresh, but, fresh um, out of college and has has good news. Um, we'll let we'll talk about that. Yeah. I don't give that away. Um, so that's fun. Uh, we are coming up, guys. We're about to hit. I think we're under what? 60 days. Oh, my God. Yeah, we got one more April show, right? No, actually, it'll be May. No, this will be the final April Wednesday. Well, it'll be yeah. uh, Wednesday is the first. Uh, May 1st is on a Wednesday. But, yeah. So then that leaves one month and then what, basically one week, right? Like, I mean, I don't yeah. know how many recordings we'll do as we're trying to get <laughs> packed and gone. It'll yep. be here. Boom. Yep. And Instantly. Yeah. I can't wait. And in classic Tennessee fashion, uh, we have a fire in the fireplace upstairs. Yeah, we won't, I was gonna. We I was gonna have say, one yeah, in six it got weeks. Cold. I was gonna say, I hope you can't feel hear yeah. my uh, space heater <laughs> behind me because I haven't turned the air or heat on in this house in uh, probably a month and a half because I'm just gonna ride the highs and the lows. And it's cold in here today, it's man. It's cold, mm -hmm. and I don't know how it knows, but hit June one, and all of a sudden it ain't cold anymore. <laughs> ever, ever again. It Every now, actually, though, that's not true. We and you know, Barry, because we've been. Yeah. I've been with you true. one or when we got there very early. I think it was about seventeen that she was talking about her first year, and it was yeah bitter, like teeth chattering, cold yeah. at night. Flipped. Very rare, though. Happened. Very rare. Very rare. Uh, good episode last week. I was off, but uh, uh, it was a good episode. 
Oh yeah, yeah. that's Tara right. We Kai, haven't yeah. we, mm-hmm. we haven't talked to, to Russ in a couple of weeks. I'm glad mm-hmm. you mentioned that. Uh, Tara and Joe and Kai were on last week. They are part of Camp Nut Butter and have been for many many years. They're a huge part of Camp Nut Nut Butter. Mm-hmm. Um, well, Tara she, and Kai were on, and Cassie. Oh, yeah, Joe was not on with us, and Cassie. Um, yeah, uh, but again, that just sort of that history. And Tara's been she's run many local venues and again you can imagine the conversations that we've had around around camp nut butter about oh bonnaroo in the industry in general oh yeah. we've gotten some local guys who we all know here i won't you know, there's no reason to go into because nobody knows who they are in this capacity but who at, over like slightly intoxicated like late night you know kind of were kind of toning it down and be like you guys in the media need to start giving more credit yep. and this is small town politics stuff right like this is not right. big time stuff but like when i when the mayor does this or when outdoor chattanooga <laughs> is doing this y'all are kind of crapping on it and like well yeah i guess if we're gonna have this conversation anywhere it might as well be late night at bonnaroo so we can all forget well. by tomorrow <laughs> pretty much similar to what we do here so. a little bit a little bit but yeah that was uh <laughs> but they they uh not to belittle again but thanks to brian uh especially you kind of took it took charge we had uh uh patrick wayland wayland right from uh soberu wayland yeah it's spelled wheeling like wheeling foundries here locally so we're used to yeah. local saying wheeling it's it's wayland like wayland jennings but he was on two weeks ago and then we had uh uh tara and cassie and you again to sort of and kai to talk about the sort of practicalities of how to do a festival sober among other things. So, yeah, that was a – sorry you weren't there, but I know you were uh, in your VW bus with Bugapalooza having a good time. So Yeah, quick mm-hmm. synopsis. It's just a Volkswagen show here in the southeast, one of the biggest ones, uh, as a matter of one fact. One of the biggest ones. Yeah, this was actually our 25th year doing this show, and uh, it's all – down at Camp Jordan, which is close to Chattanooga, and we got just good, had a big... Got good weather uh, for it? Got great weather, oh, finally, yeah. Perfect we kind of have the same problem. You never know, April in Tennessee, you're either going to oh, get a you... snowstorm or a heat wave or a monsoon or a washout. Or three. Or, yeah, a yeah, washout. Or a washout. We've had all of that in the yeah. last 25 years, but it was, it was good. I mean, it's a sold-out show, and we have about 350 cars and you know, full full camping, full of uh, buses and beetles and campers and all that. And it all we all uh, donate to the Ronald McDonald House. We usually raise between uh, twelve and twenty thousand dollars for the Ronald McDonald House every year. Yeah, it's a real fu- it's a real fun event here locally that um, that I've been to many years. Not every year, partially because April is for my likings and my world so loaded. It never stops. That's why it's one <laughs> of my favorite or my favorite month yeah and yeah. uh and then weather f's it up sometimes and this time it didn't yeah. so, th- so this good time we guys. had perfect weather yeah, yeah. so that's yeah. where i was uh sunday decided to have a, a late lunch over at uh low main down on main street uh-huh. and uh i look out the window and here comes brian stone walking down the street i'm like cool <laughs> all right uh never see him never see him make it into low main though uh turns out you were th- went to the record store next door for the uh pearl jam album release party and uh, and i even said something like oh man you should have come and said hi and uh what what was your response uh did i i don't remember but it was did i say i was too stoned on delta <laughs> nine legal hemp derivatives here <laughs> in tennessee i can't i can't remember i thought we text because i saw the bus pull in it's almost impossible not to see and this was uh the week before record store day so this was uh right. last since we talked this was uh wednesday uh, excuse me sunday the 14th and I will make this super fast. This is not that great of a story. But a couple of years ago, I was at a Pearl Jam concert, and it's the first time I ever stumbled into these these legal products, which, you know, get back with me at the end of the year and we can talk about whether they're legal anymore. But it's a derivative of the hemp plant, and it's it's basically um, it, it's it's marijuana that's just designed differently in many states, and it's legal. And and I had a terrible experience at the uh, the Pearl Jam concert a couple of years ago. Well, this was a Pearl Jam listening party. That the the show was re- the uh, album was released over this past week, so it was your fr- your only chance in our city to listen to the record start to finish. Pretty cool idea. It's five minutes from my house. Why the hell wouldn't I do it? It was the end of my week of a vacation, a staycation. 
And I was like, I'm just going to, you know, kind of like I would do when I was drinking. Like, hey, man, we're about done here. Let's have some fun. And I hit that a little <laughs> too hard. <laughs> and, and, at yeah. that, and at that terrible experience, and that was with a, me not knowing what I was doing and being a foolish drunk and everything else. Just like, yeah, I'll take some of those. That'll be great. It was horrible. Yeah, if one is good, two is better. Exactly. Right? Not better, true yeah. at all. <laughs> and so I've learned a lot since then, and on this day, at my better judgment just got ahead of me. And it does, yeah, evidently again, you haven't learned that much. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what you said. You said, oh, I saw the bus, and I was going to come in and say hi. I was too stoned. I forgot. <laughs> well, I started to have, like, these flashbacks. I'm listening. They had it on loud. I was wonderful here at our local record store. I mean, it blasted yeah, in it's the a store. Cool shop. You can get a beer there. My brother yeah. was... Was there having some beers and i just i you can get a beer and a tattoo and <laughs> some new vinyl it's a cool place it started to hit me yeah. and i didn't want to talk to anybody and i know i looked a little <laughs> weird and i was like oh my god i hope this doesn't get like that last time a couple years i was overthinking it freaking out just a touch and i was like i'm going to just have to ghost taco nice. on this one i'm just <laughs> I gotta go I got ghosted. now. I got ghosted. This hard, was at yeah. like four o'clock on a Sunday, so we were going to uh, my brother and I back just to watch golf and baseball and just cook at the house. So that was kind of why. Who cares if you get a little too much? Except for when you go out in public and stand around a record store and look like you know, think everybody's looking at you. <laughs> oh it no, is. Uh, it is. It was yep. bad. It was. It, it it was. It wasn't bad. It just was uncomfortable, and it was time to go. <laughs> That's yeah. all. <laughs> That's all it was. So the other news, big news. Again, we're kind of kind of keeping it local, but it's a national uh, big news for us here in Chattanooga. Usher was in town yesterday, getting the key to the city. I think again. Yeah, which I don't quite understand because <laughs> yeah. he got one before. So I don't know. I guess he has now the we, back door key. <laughs> we can save this for the local podcast yeah. that we do around yeah. here. But I, but Barry, I, you and me have never really discussed it. I can remember this usher feeling you have but i can yeah. tell i can feel what it is and i'm here for it yeah. i love it and the doubling down and never stopping i love it um but he was here as a it was a big honor uh you know uh, celebration kind of thing. yeah I, I i'm over it i know what you're talking about because i have been a whiny bitch about it for years and years <laughs> i, and think I have my reasons i think it's funny <laughs> but uh, I think apparently it's funny. he Apparently he gave some props to some people and that's all I wanted him to hear was to acknowledge his past. And uh, for those who don't know, Usher was not born here, but he was raised here and he moved when he was 12 um, and hasn't given Chattanooga much props until recently. And Basically, no, and pretended like it didn't exist. Pretended like it didn't exist. And there's a whole thing behind it. And, yeah. and I, I have a really deep connection that's more than just you know, um, me being a whiny bitch, like I said, but <laughs> he was here, uh, and they celebrated him and I'm glad, uh, we'll see what happens with the trial, well, with Diddy and Puffy and all that. But Usher, I, let me just say he, there's no question the man's talent. And he's absolutely, he's it a feels superstar. like there's no question. He's a quality person person i think he's getting there he's getting yeah, there. i that's think my that, point. i think that he's there i think that's what of course as much as you can i can know about right. somebody who played the halftime show at the super bowl but right he's a superstar and, and deservedly so <laughs> well um, suits your superstar continued comment means you don't you mean it but it's i i, I, I just i want to be it. over it I, I love it. Over it. I love it. I, I'm I'm happy for it's him. It's subtle to those here. that don't know where you're coming from, and not subtle at all <laughs> to of us that know where you are. I think yeah. it's funny. I had no interest in going. They called that thing sold out. You notice the whole rafters were empty. It wasn't really sold. Yeah, it's 3,500 people. It was in the arena here, but yeah, so it it's worth road. mentioning because you know he's got roots here, and and uh, so good for him. Um, what was the other news? You know, the couple of things that happened, we saw headlines. The Department of Justice is going after Live Nation. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's going to be an interesting thing, I guess. It'll I be mean, in the courts for five years. And there'll be a buyout. Uh, there'll be a check written somewhere, nah. and it'll all go away. It's, it's a headline it, I'm happy to see. Does it mean anything? 
No, antitrust no. laws are not a thing in America. The funny thing to me is the only reason it came up is because apparently some people in Congress, their kids tried to get Taylor Swift tickets and couldn't, and so now there's a law. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Am I wrong? That's yeah. They're that's also suing Apple, so we'll see how that goes too. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. I think it's every bit Taylor Swift. I don't want to talk about Congress. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but that's what happened, you know, Mike. I know it is. Tickets, I know so it's, it's exactly a law. what happened. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, think, mm-hmm. I think it's hilarious. But, uh, um, you know, Pearl Jam's been trying to tell you for 30 years, and speaking of 30 years, um, it's 30 years since their Vitalogy record was released and limited to release. It was the first time they put out vinyl. Um, that was their third album in the 90s, and vinyl was dead. Dead as a doornail. Dead, dead vinyl was dead unless you just want to go get a Carol King tapestries from uh, you know Chad's Records down the street. Mm-hmm. You weren't gonna get you weren't gonna get any new. Well, I have yep. it from my dad's collection, so I was. Uh, that's a that good one. pull. That's a great um, pull. You're not you're not gonna get anything <laughs> that's really that special except for some really super special releases and with Record Store Day. It's now, a good it's, album. And it's it's a great album. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's a great album. <laughs> In its 17 uh, years now of Record Store Day, it's been a, it's been um, really cool where it's gotten. And I'm not a big record uh, 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 collector outside of special limited releases. And, of course, you know I have to show off my beautiful, if you're watching on YouTube, wow. Pearl Jam Dark Matter Record Store Day release. Nice. Gold and black uh, nice. ghost vinyl, they're calling it. It's just the album. The packaging's the same as a regular album. It's just the colored vinyl you're paying for. And yeah. that's what I like, as you can see over my shoulder, my red Nick, Nick Let's Go local guy. I love mm-hmm. colored vinyls. If you'll do this, I will buy it. The uh, My Morning Jacket Bonnaroo vinyl double that I was listening to yesterday is that green uh, color uh, vinyl. It's gorgeous. When, it's you, really si- cool. when yeah. you posted that on social, um, because I... <laughs> These things are expensive. I, so yeah. I, I didn't want to buy too many. I was kind of zeroing in on the one thing. I've gone in there and spent $400 on a record store day because, like, oh, my God, look at that one. Dizzy look at that one. I got away. Today, they were, like, they were even joking as they were waiting to let me, or today, the other day, yesterday, waiting to let me in. It was, I mean, there was a lot of small talk. But, like, what are you looking forward to? I was like, Pearl Jam, out of here. It's like, no, 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 you got to check out – Okay, man, just for the sake of conversation, I'll tell you, you're right, dude. But this year it was like not happening because there's yeah. so many, so many cool releases, uh, especially mm-hmm. on the colored vinyls. Man, I, that, I'm all about the color, it. all about the colored vinyls. I love it. And they sound great. So, they Record sound- Store Day was a ton of fun. Yeah, I'm listening to nice. this yeah, today in the garage, and then it goes in a frame like that one back there uh, by the end of the day. This week I got to see Wanda play at uh, Cherry Street Tavern in, here in Chattanooga. Nice. Nice. Yeah, I saw uh, you posting from that. Um, yeah, one of our Hunts very Hill. very cool new places in town, newish newer places in town. Right, in the uh, Wanda mm-hmm. from Huntsville yeah, area. Great venue. Yeah, they're right. Yeah, she's from Huntsville. Yeah, she's played. She's played Bonnaroo. She played the uh, the canceled Speakeasy Mini Roo that we had. You know, back in twenty twenty. Yeah, yeah. Friends of Rubus, and, uh, uh, Daniel I and Charla. I know they. they friends of uh, Rubus. I seem to run into her every year, either at Bonnaroo. Uh, I ran into her at the Waffle House one year, and then she actually ended up camping out near us in her uh, Wanda van. Uh, I think last year, so it was cool. It was she's never played Chattanooga before, so her it was and her Russ first are almost time coming friends. To town. Nice, almost, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She list she list you for the Cherry Street Tavern show. You're this no, close. I no, You're I, this I, close. I, I'm this close. No, I, yeah, I paid the cover, which you know wasn't much, but it was it was fun. You didn't tell her who you good, were. It was a good time, man. All right, missed uh, opportunity. Knows who I am. Let's yeah. go to yeah Huntsville. Uh, nice segue. Big news. Uh, we've been mm-hmm. hinting at. We we knew it was coming. We didn't know details, and we still don't know a lot of details. But uh, Huntsville will have a festival. Um, sooner than people thought, right? Most Sep- people thought September. it would be a year. It's going to be in September, yep. and it's uh, South Star, mm-hmm. which I don't know. Uh, I, they had to get Star or something in there because of the NASA yeah. uh, connection. You knew it was going to be space themed. Yeah. I mean, I guess if you want North Star, South Star, I don't know. I don't hate it. I don't love it. But I'm the okay. same. I'm the yeah. same. 
And then uh, all the worst kept secret is Blink 182, right? As the yeah. headliner. I mean, they yeah, haven't announced, the they have week. not announced, there's no official allow- announcement of the lineup, but Festival has it and, and others. So count yeah. me, count me not uh, uh, impressed with, with that, but it, it's got, it's supposedly going to have a 90s, 2000s focus. Yeah. Kind of do rock. count me interested in where that goes. Do count me interested in where that goes. Blink-182 ain't going to ever do anything for me, but that's a good start if that's the area you're looking for. What is that, uh, 70 minutes from here? It's not quite an hour and a half, right? Not. I haven't made it's the drive in a while. from here. Yeah. Yeah, so we're going is what I'm getting at. Probably. Gonna, probably going to be I've already in, gotten uh, hit up by Lindsay. He's uh, either be in some camping space yeah. out there, and yeah, either Daniel's backyard. And he already or said I can, I can park ex- with him somewhere. Exactly. There's <laughs> too many connections. This isn't right. like us saying we're going to Louisville, Bourbon and Beyond. Let's go. This is yeah. a little <laughs> more like, yeah, why not? I mean, we're unless going. unless your daughter gets married on this day, or your yeah. uh, dad's mom or your mom's birthday right. is that weekend. Why not? Yeah. In September? The only yeah. the only I'll question is, I'm guessing uh, I'm not sure Daniel's yard is big enough for everybody that's going to be going, but we're going somehow, he'll, somewhere. He'll we're figure going. it well, out. I yeah. No, like I said, I already got hit up by Lindsay. He's rented a campsite, and he said there's room for me to pull in as well. So that's that's where All I'll right. be. There you go. All right. So that's and cool. And then one more thing here too on the list that you sent, uh, Russ. Before we get too far mm-hmm. away here. I, and I looked it up, and, and and I felt it was worth mentioning. This Grimes DJ set right. at Coachella. <laughs> this was fast last night, and then most things I was finding were people who were doing additional commentary on it, and that was annoying me. So I I just kind of wanted to I I wanted a you know too long didn't read version, and uh, boy was that impressive embarrassing right Isn't that weird barry did you see this yeah With the yeah, way yeah, the, yeah just the way she reacted um i'm not going to pretend at all to understand how that spinning records and dj sets go but in the in the in traditional music world when and and reset this a little bit more in just two seconds but in a traditional uh music world when you're playing and something doesn't go right you don't talk to the audience about it you work Mm -hmm. feverishly to fix it and if it can't be fixed immediately then maybe an announcement needs to be made but that's often not going to be by you it's going to be by somebody of a a stage manager or somebody else within that infrastructure you because it's just like on on if you're doing a show like it you don't dwell on your mistakes just get by them and move along and power your way through it and she did the opposite of all those things and yeah. was getting frustrated and yelling and hooting. And, if you, and maybe if you can throw a link or just something to show her on the stage, uh, Taco and Post or whatever. This is very hard to explain because this is a complex technology, but everything has been put to a double tempo. So I'm doing a lot of internal math in my mind to make the tracks go together and I'm having to. It's hard to explain. It was the. Example of how you do not handle when everything is haywire, malfunctioning. And so, yeah, to try to, yeah, it's it's fascinating because I I remember seeing it earlier in the week. So you're right, Brian. I mean, things happen. Uh, A PA goes out. The electricity goes out. uh, Somebody kicks a cord, and suddenly you can't hear. I remember Adele a couple of years ago. The sound went out. But, and she had her inner ears and didn't know. And she's singing. You know, I remember that. Things happen. Happens all the time, actually. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And in this case, what happened, and she had the poor guy who who she threw under the bus. I can't imagine if he even has a, he or she has a job. What happened was she's a DJ. And she, as she said, she typically does everything herself. She puts the files that's what she said. Put the files together herself. She relied on somebody else, and they got out of order. Do- and double sped, right? Like yeah. The, that that it was up. It was up double speed on the playback. Right. So it was basically a. You know, we've all done that with computers, you know, where you've written something and you can't find it. 
but that just is so weird to me to think of as a musical artist being flummoxed by computer files, number one, and then she, like you said, just melted she, down. She she looked looked and sounded ridiculous. And yeah. and I feel and, and to a certain degree I feel a feel for her and, and clearly She's yeah, a young. She's sure. young. She's young, and her maturity level isn't isn't. If it was 10, 15 years later, she might handle it differently. But this is you could use the old sports cliche, you know, sports talk conversation. Are golfers uh, athletes? Are bowlers athletes? That's are yeah. DJs musicians? I, I mean, know. I mean, we, 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 I, you, I, call I, now. I, you know, what do you think? Yeah. <laughs> like, I had all those thoughts too. Yeah, your files got out of order, but I mean, you know, because um, the guitar, know. the guitar weird. player who does have a guitar tech, right? The drummer does have a drummer tech. Everybody's got somebody on the bigger state levels that that can help you in the moment, before the moment, after the moment. Just like a pit car in a you know pit crew right. in a NASCAR race, so you do get help, but a guitar player doesn't stop and say, "I don't know why my amp's not working." Yeah, I'm strumming the guitar. Strings, who put these strings out of order? I mean, I, I yeah, I wrote this song and it's not working the way that I wrote it. Like, yeah. and so I don't. I, I flippantly ask that. It does bring a little bit of a question. How much of this is? pushing a button and then maybe a little bit of something you you can do that i can't yeah it was, i agree it, was it, just, lo it, was it an looked interesting story bad it looked really bad yeah all right so uh what else any other news it's kind of a i think like that a, covers what? most of it uh the sphere uh run with the fish started um that just got running I, I i think they might go for a couple of weeks i know the dead's about to do it for damn near a month um, I, the I think place they're only doing four shows, right? I, I read a really lengthy story actually about that. Okay, maybe um, I'm I'm thinking of a different one of these runs. Um, I thought it was I a know, little longer. Well, it, well, that was the point of the story was when you two opened, they were only supposed to do I don't remember 13 shows yeah. and ended up doing 35. Say so they never stopped, <laughs> right? Yeah. And then so they asked uh, Fish if they wanted to do multiples, and uh, the point of the story was they kind of asked uh, Trey Anastasio. I think he said, what would be different? Because we don't do the same set ever. He said, what would be the benefit of doing, you know, 10 more? And they said, nothing really. He said, no, we're just going to do the four that we originally scheduled. And they're, and it's going to be like 90 songs, no two repeats. So, Well, that sounds about like how they would do it. I mean, right. they've done Madison Square, run, uh, Madison Square Garden runs for upwards right. of 10 days. So right. they have sat in one spot and done, but that was less about an experience different than a regular show and more about New York has so many damn people. We can right. fill this place up this many days. Right. The sphere is more of an, a, of a, an of experience. I think, yeah. I guess I think I'm fascinated by I'm this place. You. I'm, I'm, I can listen to fish. Oh. But I would love to see him in the sphere. I, ain't, I think well, that would be a cool experience. I think my head would explode. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. I would want it to. I would expect it to. <laughs> I love the jam band stuff. Yeah. Even when I was really, really into jam band music, Fish was always, I kept it quiet because nobody wanted to hear this, but they were always lower on my list of what I cared about. Great music for sure, but the... My, yeah. <laughs> my very first Bonnaroo... Sunday morning, I woke up, like I always do, way before everybody else, probably 5 o'clock. And some guy's walking down the road, and again, I'm this completely new, and some girl was sitting across the way, and I think he had a joint, and she had some acid, and they were like, hey, you know, hi, you want to share? And so they sat down, and they he started saying, I guess it was – uh. Was it Trey was there that year or Fish? It would have been it was, it was it was it uh, what year? Seven. I think it was oh, just seven. him. It was just Trey. I don't think Fish, yeah, was there until 09. So I'm sitting there at six in the morning listening to these two people out of their minds, and he started saying, I just have this connection with Trey. It's like I'm sitting there out in the audience and I look at him and I start thinking of a song and then he plays it. <laughs> And I was, I mean, I'm dying laughing in my <laughs> tent, <laughs> thinking wow. this is so great. 
I don't condone violence, but I want to sm- just smack that guy in the face. Me and Trey, we have this mind meld thing. I, yeah. God, I wish I could have recorded sure it. Sure you do, bro. <laughs> yeah. Sure you do. Let's go ask Trey. Anyway. But we'd like to talk to somebody who's got a little bit uh, closer yeah. to that to that uh, uh, venue and maybe people who are in conversations of booking it just because it's such a unique place. And... Um, I just, it was, I thought, worth mentioning, at least mentioning for right now. Let's go ahead and our contest winner, Lucy Young. Um, We asked people to use that phone number and call and recommend uh, people on the lower card uh, that we should listen to. And we got almost 100 or more. And uh, Lucy was the one that we chose, the three of us. Yeah, a pair of GA Plus as well. Mm Mm-hmm. She's going to be making the trip from San Antonio to Manchester. So here is our interview with Lucy. And then when we come back, we'll talk a little bit more about the next sort of contest we want to run. And here she is, our ticket winner. Hi. Congratulations. Lucy Young, how are you? Thank you. I'm doing great. How are you guys? Shoot, we're doing great. Getting ready. We're we're coming up on it. It's going to be here before we know it. And uh, you're going to be there, and I assume a couple of friends of yours. Is that how this is going to work? Um, yeah. So I think I'm going to give the tickets that I bought to some of my friends, and then we're going to take the GA+. Plus. We've never done that before. So I'm really excited. I've never done GA+, plus either. So I don't really know the how great those little tickets plus perks are but they've uh, <laughs> they've got to be better than non plus perks i would guess yeah air conditioned bathroom and free soda i'm fine right, with you, that. you had me at ac <laughs> facilities right <laughs> ac uh, uh, uh restroom facilities that's that's it that's all i need to know yeah gonna be living in luxury this year <laughs> So Lucy is our winner. Um, we all agreed. Uh, we loved your phone call. Thank you. I love you. the fact that you listen to this sh- stupid show that we do, and uh, <laughs> and that you love Bonnaroo as much as we do. And uh, yeah, this is so. The person you're going to give the tickets to have they been before? Um, yeah. So um, okay. we're bringing our two friends. They're a couple. They went with us for the first time last year. All right. Well, tell us a little bit about yourself, where you live, how many years have you been, what is Bonnaroo? You know, we got a hundred questions. We're going to hit you with all of them. <laughs> all right. So I'm living in San Antonio right now. Um, I started in 2017, which was my freshman year of college. I was, um, I had heard about it when I was in high school from some of my colleagues and I was really into concerts and I grew up camping. So when the, the idea was pitched to me, I was like immediately sold. So as soon as I was like kind of an adult, I decided it was time to go. And um, ironically, like right before we left, like two weeks before I got a call in the middle of the night from a blocked number. And it turns out I had won two GA tickets. Um, I had already bought it for me and my dad and two of my friends. Um, but I decided to bring my, um, a guy I was crushing on that I was working with at the time. And uh, it's a good we start went. to get to get that to work. I've done <laughs> I've done that before. It doesn't always work, but it's a it good worked, start. He, it worked for me um, because last year he proposed to me. At oh Mario. my god! So, <laughs> yeah. Well, what a wow. what a year and a half, right? <laughs> oh well, that was 2017. Oh, so I'm sorry. Been... <laughs> okay. What a what a how long ago was that? Uh, Seven well, years. It feels like a year and yeah. a half. Yeah, so. it does. That, that sounds yeah. like my romance. <laughs> <laughs> it took four years anyway. <laughs> so we're um, getting married this year, so it's kind of sweet that we're we're winning tickets again, kind of like a full circle moment. Um, I'm really excited. <laughs> so do you enter contests a lot? Do you win things from Coca-Cola? Do you win, do you um, win things from like local radio stations? <laughs> Is this just something you do? Um, I used to do it a lot more, but yeah, um, I am pretty lucky. <laughs> well, I'll, t- I'll tell you too, Lucy, real quick, just slightly <laughs> off subject, but in the same vein, is I know a few people that they're just, I almost call them professional contest uh, <laughs> entry types. I'm not saying that's what you are, but you, it's the old lottery thing, right? 
even yeah. if it's a hundred billion trillion dollars. <laughs> you can't win if you don't play. You don't play. Right. And, yeah. Uh, and and so right. here's a perfect example. I like example. to think about them logically. Like if I see that there's already a million ca- um, entries, I'm not going to do it. But if I if I think my odds are in my favor, I'll usually put in an entry to set it. I can hear people asking, so why did you win? So what we liked, and we all liked your, your response, uh, we asked people to give us a call uh, and tell us who, the, uh, who on the undercard we should check out. And your answer was... Almost, I I kind of not argued. It it almost sounded like you were you were his PR agent. <laughs> I mean, it was, it was so detailed and everything. But uh, Brian and and Russ were like, no, she put in a lot of work. She did she did a lot of research and and had a good answer. So um, go over that just a little bit. What why this particular artist and uh, and did you do a lot of research and where did it all come from? Um, so my friend that um, has been going with us in 2018 recommended him to me, and I really liked his sound, and I thought it was something that maybe y'all would enjoy as well. And um, for honestly, reference point, we're talking about who who was it that you were suggesting? I'm sorry, uh, I don't know if Josiah calling. and the Bonnevilles. Got gotcha, like you, got gotcha, you, got gotcha. you. Indie. Yeah, um, that myself. Thank you. Honestly, I just had some free time at work, so scouring the Wikipedia <laughs> and crafting a submission. Um, I know that if I put some work into it, then maybe I would be played on the show. So I was um, happy to do it. Uh, so, I'm, uh, I'm not a PR agent, just a, a nonprofit that. worker. That's that's actually brilliant thinking going into a situation like this. First of all, you did what I do all the time, Wikipedia, and simple <laughs> sources to quickly come up with a generalized, hey, I know what this is all about thing, which I'm not saying that's bad because, I, again, I do it all the time. But also... Anytime I have come from the radio world, uh, the radio world and Barry comes from the print. So kind of traditional old style media all the way from the the op eds. Right. That would come into the paper uh, that would the, the, the letters to the editor, I guess I should say. Sorry, Barry. Or the calls that come into stations or things we used to do. I mean, if you didn't put any work into it, you weren't going to get you weren't going to get on and the people who realize who consume any of these kinds of medias and this being one of a newer media hey uh you should check out jim bob and the uh fish bones <laughs> okay well i mean i'm not saying you're not going to win and this is not an fcc controlled situation so we can do the contest however we feel like and we try to feel like we do it as fair as possible right. uh, but a good call is going to go a long way it's going to good call is going to go a long way to get you on the show if that's what you want to do some people don't care about that some people just want to be involved any way they can so you used all the formulas that, <laughs> that i have been slowly learning for 20 years and you did that in a very condensed small period of time so congrats to you to understand how to play this game because it, it kind Thank of you. Is, it kind of is so everyone everyone take note this is how you do it and <laughs> you followed instructions because you actually recommended an artist that's on the bonnaroo lineup we got a lot of calls that were just like <laughs> really? i think you should check out the rolling stones we're like what <laughs> yeah so you know, um, following instructions uh, will take you far. Yeah, let me That's talk about funny. this band Mastodon I just heard of the other day. Yeah. He's pretty yeah. good. Like, yeah, we know. Yeah. Dude. Last year, I submitted an entry. Uh, we were talking about Bonnaroo stories about my dad with the bringing an orange safety vest to Bonnaroo and directing traffic. So when I, I, that I, I when I got played um, on the, the podcast, I realized that that was my... My jumping point for this year. That. Mm-hmm. that was you. That was hilarious. <laughs> yeah. And kudos to your dad. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what, what possessed him to bring it, but it was a smart decision. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't around for that story, but I can already tell that that you that yeah. That went along we've well. always we've always talked about the lanyards. You know, <laughs> yeah. Put a, put as many lanyards around your neck as you can, and just act like you belong. But the orange <laughs> vest—that's next level. That is next yeah. level. Like our guy Brad, uh, you know, longtime uh, co-founder and host of this show, that bleep hole did this every year with all his old, classy, cool-looking uh, uh, yep. uh, lanyards, and he would wear them just as as aesthetics yep. more than anything and they got him places that he never would have dreamed and i've <laughs> i've learned from him to do that in a certain way i'm just not as brash as he is about talk, it taco yeah. i forgot um the first year we were all going together remember we asked you to buy uh the walkie talkie 
mm-hmm. things with the earpieces because we were gonna yeah. that figure we figured that would get us anywhere. <laughs> Just had the you know the. <laughs> But then it was... Uh, that didn't work out as well as we were expecting. <laughs> yeah. it? No, it was right after <laughs> what? Was it something? There was some major event, security, and we were worried that we would be thought of as security and <laughs> people would ask us for help yeah. or something. So yeah. We're definitely not security. <laughs> no, we thought better of it, but we thought that would be the way to... Well, just, every year yeah. we try to, especially about a decade ago, in the little lesson that where... What can we do to outdo ourselves this year? Yeah. <laughs> Walkie talkies. Yeah, Mailbox. <laughs> Mailbox. I'm actually working on that. I've got an idea for this year. Oh, um, no good. All right. So, L- Lucy, yeah, uh, I, we kind of hijacked your answer a little bit. So you started in 17. You've been every year, obviously, other than the, the COVID years, like everybody. Right. Yeah, right. I drove all the way to, to Tennessee that year uh, just for it to get canceled. But uh, yeah. well, let's back up real quick. How Tell me yeah. about that. Yeah. Let's do the story on to was that the 2021. So that was that was that the year uh-huh. we're talking about the flooded year, mm-hmm. the hurricane. Yeah. How far so, did you get to Tennessee from San Antonio or where wherever you were coming from in Texas? How how far to Tennessee did you get? Um, we're like outside of Memphis, so I still had maybe two or three hours left. Still but we, a little I mean, ways, we did, but that's that's a we long did a big way to chunk go. of the drive. Yeah, so we. Uh, um, so, do you drive to get here? Um, uh, yeah. And how long a drive is it? It's thirteen and a half hours if oh, I were to just woo! go straight God, that hurts. there. <laughs> that hurts every bit of my soul. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! God bless you. That is so yeah. cool, though. That is such de- determination, and and really shows uh, how how excited people like you. When I say people like you, I uh-huh. mean people who don't live nearby. <laughs> That's yeah. uh, g- we that- get in the ki- we get in the car and roll down the hill, and we're there. Oh my God! Yeah, I can't even nice. fall asleep at night as quickly <laughs> as it takes me to get to Bonnaroo. <laughs> uh, the how drive many there- people? Um, this year, I think we're going to have about five or six, um, last year was our biggest year. How many vehicles? Um, two, three. Okay. Caravan. Um, All right. Yeah. Um, Mm -hmm. um, last year, our biggest group was 10. Um, so we have some people flying in and we had to like go even farther to Nashville and they go down. Um, but it's, it's all in the game. I love it. (laughs) So did you get to Memphis and stop? Or did uh, you well, we had on? camping reservations Tuesday night at Monte Sano Park. Um, so in where is that? Oh, it's Huntsville, Alabama. Sorry. Um, I've so been there. we, yeah, it's really nice. Um, mm-hmm. So we decided that we we're just going to go ahead and stay in those accommodations, and then we booked some extra nights and had a little camp time. But it wasn't the same, <laughs> you know. Did you do a little mini roo? Um, I guess you could say, I mean, we're <laughs> in yeah. a national park, so a little bit different. Any but... version that year of a roo, a mini roo could have been this small because mm-hmm. we all did something because we were all yep. packed. Right. Yep. Yeah. Like, yeah. Hell, yeah. You, you were packed and drove 10 hours or whatever it was. I was yeah. packed and waited 10 minutes until they told me I couldn't go, but yeah. yeah. And, then we and went the last thing we wanted to do was room. drive back. Yeah. <laughs> of that core group, you said sometimes four, sometimes five, sometimes 10. Uh, everybody else like you been multiple times or is it always new people? Um, this year it, it should be all um, reti- uh, veterans, sorry. Okay. Um, but I usually like to bring a rookie with us so that I can show them everything and kind of like live through their eyes. Because <laughs> um, your first year is better than every year, no matter what. It depends. <laughs> I guess it depends true. on who you ask. Yeah. The, the, problem so with, the problem with a festival like, uh, well, like any of them that are on that scale, is that when yeah. you're new, now you're, t- you're talking about bringing somebody with you. So that changes the dynamics a little bit. But you spend over half the time there trying to figure out where the hell you're at. And by the time you figure it out, it's time to go. So yeah. um, I've heard that story a thousand times. But when you got right. somebody there to guide you through it, then that changes everything. So that's really cool, and I know, and it's it's just like that phenomenon of want the the people, and I'm I'm one of them a little bit too. We all are to a certain degree as music fans. I want to introduce you to this music, like this song. Listen to this song; it's so great. And it's like oh, I'll get to it someday, dude. Right. But in this setting, I want to show you, you know, the fountain. Let's just okay. prefer something we all are familiar mm-hmm. with. Something that they're like, I got to take you now. The, the indoor plumbing. Let me show you this. This is great. Imagine when this wasn't here. 
that's got to be Air pretty cool. bathrooms. Yeah, yeah. it's got to be pretty yeah. cool to be able to uh, be kind of the uh, the the person who who is is guiding that uh, that tour, if you will, and then the person who gets to like you know really get that information really fast to make a great weekend out of it. Yeah, the the walk through the circle through Sunaru on Thursday is like my favorite part, almost always. Um, cause, Reacquainting, yeah. yeah, yeah. Things are just yeah. fe- it's a different feel that day. It's just a different Brian, feel. Brian likes to go a couple weeks early when there's nobody there, and then he likes to go that Wednesday night when there's nobody in there and sort of check out that. Uh, that he does that walkabout. Yeah. What are, yeah, one of my favorite days of, of the year, uh, just making a list of calendar days, was the Wednesday. Now, the festival's shifted some, and, and they don't let us do things that they let us do. But, yeah, that day, Wednesday, before anything settled and everything, but everything's popping off. All the lights, the Ferris wheel, if it was there, the the uh, the disco bar ball in the sky is is all flowing. It looks like there's a party going on, but there's not. Yeah, and it's just us, and we're just like, oh my god, look at this place! But they don't do (laughs) it like that, like they used to. All right, Lucy. So I want to. There's a lot to unpack, but uh, how does a girl from San Antonio get engaged in Manchester, Tennessee, at a sweaty, stinky music festival? Tell me what that was like. (laughs) Well, it was during our Thursday lap, um, so we were we were fresh. (laughs) <laughs> well played, well played. Um, what, what is his name, by the way? His name is Cameron. Um, well played, Cameron. <laughs> we went as friends, um, but we left as partners. Um, so it was really sweet. Um, and Bonaboo, yeah. sometimes we turn into <laughs> Bona hubbies. Yeah, sometimes it works, guys. <laughs> You hear that, Russ? <laughs> There's still time. Are you talking to me? <laughs> we can still make yeah. this happen. So, and and and, and I'm. It's going to sound flip, but what took so long? Was it you? Was it him? Uh, you well, guys were just uh, weren't ready. I mean, we, I mean, we met when I was a, like a freshman in college, so we were okay. pretty young. Okay. Um, fair, fair. Yeah, and then we moved to San Antonio, um, and then I don't know. I thought I was going to do it last year. Um, because we went for Flume my first year. Oh, so you so were waiting on this. Oh, that's what I was bit. trying to get at but, here. But, um, Take a hint, dude. He, oh. <laughs> last year he was like, um, oh, it's not the right time and place. And for the same reason you're saying, like, you know, we're having a little alcohol, we're sweaty. Like, I, I could understand if you wanted to do it in a more professional yeah, setting. Sure. Yeah. But I think he just said that to throw me off. <laughs> so I wasn't expecting it the next year. Another well played. Mm-hmm. You guys, yeah. you guys okay. know what you're He's, doing. He's so you're in Santaru. Where exactly? I'm um, curious about all this. In front of the it's witch stage. I have a, a cute little video. Some strangers started clapping for us. So sweet. <laughs> and it was in front of which? What yeah. stage? Which witch stage? Yeah. All right. So you know, you guys remember Brad, uh, my the former co-host, uh, famously tells the story of watching the guy drop to a knee during "Live and Let Die." I think during McCartney. Right, drop to a knee and propose just as the fireworks were going off. That's hey. pretty solid, right? Yeah, there, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. pretty strong. That's some planning. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's that's hard to get that one. Um, so, what is it takes you guys back? I mean, that's a thirteen-hour drive. I mean, we know what we love about it. Um, but what is it that brings brings you back every year? Um, of course, the music. Um, there's always something that gets me there. I, I've always been a concert kid. Um, like I grew up working at the Cynthia Mitchell's Wood Pavilion in Houston. Um, so I've always been a concert enthusiast. Um, but really, it's just like the camping and getting to hang out with your friends and just be like removed from society for a little bit. Um, it, there's nothing like it. Well, uh, to, to the same question, kind of, sort of. Coming from um, Texas, there's a lot of events, some good, some not so good, and they're they're having some more music festivals over the years. And, of course, uh, Austin City Limits, I mean, that's not nowhere near where you're at in San Antonio, but still, within the state, do you look around since then? Have you thought from year to year, Bonnaroo's great, like, I've, I've established that, everybody knows that, but there's, I mean, 
even now we got a few we might talk about uh, before the show's over uh, in a different capacity. There's so many. I mean, there's so many, and Texas is no uh, exception to adding these kinds of festivals on a smaller scale, bigger scale too. Plus, you've got Midwest area to choose from. Have you, have you thought? Maybe I should do a different one, or maybe we, as a, as our group, should try something else. Or is it is is Bonnaroo that alluring that it doesn't um, matter what goes on anywhere I, else? I think we're always going to do Bonnaroo. Um, it's a good way for our friends that live all over to kind of like meet and um, just have some like good friend time. <laughs> but um, I've done ACL, um, Freaky Deaky is like a EDM festival that we have here. I've done that a couple of times. Um, I went to Buku Festival in New Orleans when that was still mm -hmm. a thing. Um, so I, I definitely still engage in the festival sphere outside of Bonnaroo. But um, I think we'll always go back, at least for now. I was just curious if there was anything that would potentially make you say, or in your mind, you think that it could be possible that something could pop up and be like, well... But at um, some point, you gotta make it. You gotta start scratching stuff off on a to do list. And does does Bonnaroo get on that? It doesn't sound like that's the case with with with. Uh, the, probably and, not, unless there's another like large scale camping event. I think the only other event like that is Electric Forest, which is way farther away from me. Yeah, and it's a different um, it's a different world. Right, and prices are kind of crazy um, for a young person to be able to go yeah. to that as well. Well, if you don't win tickets, yeah. 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 Keep trying. Uh, so, you never know. Yeah. So uh, share some wisdom. Tell people who are first-time first-timers. Uh, we always, I always remind myself that, you know, half the audience that goes to Bonnaroo is a first-timer. So what are your tips, uh, especially for someone who's traveling as far as your you're you're traveling yeah and definitely talk yeah. about that too because that that is boy that is just a different dynamic to the whole thing um break up the drive like don't be afraid to stop um as far as driving i i try to make sure there's at least two three people in, in every car so we can take shifts no one needs to drive that long by themselves um and as far as tips like out on um, I told people not to make their meetup spot like the fountain <laughs> um, because there's going to be a million people there. <laughs> um, make it like a little vendor. Last year we saw um, there's a clothing vendor called Wormtown, and we just thought that was really silly. Um, so that was our meetup spot. And we were like always the only people in there. It was great. <laughs> um, that so does sound like a good tip. idea. Like if you uh, said yeah. a, if you said a, a, a lemonade stand. Uh, <laughs> that wouldn't work because there's so yeah. many. It's delicious right. lemonade, by the way. But <laughs> yeah. there's so many of those lemonade stands. That's probably not going to work. Not for somebody who's not really uh, uh, familiar with the footprint right. of the festival. Um, I think you said it last episode, actually, but timestamp your text. Um, if you don't get that it in, like, a, That was a Tara thing. Mm -hmm. That yeah. was yeah. great. It's one uh, of those... Never thought yeah. of something like that. What the hell? Why would I? That, <laughs> so simple. So simple. Because you know it's not going to go through for a couple hours sometimes. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I say service has gotten better over the years. But it has. I think it's, wor it's worth doing um, because you don't want to just be waiting for someone to show up for a super long Oh, hey, time. she finally texted. She's at the uh, the yeah. fountain. That was yeah. five yeah. hours ago. Yeah. Right. <laughs> She's gone. That was a great tip. It was already a bad <laughs> idea to begin with, and now it's five <laughs> hours off. <laughs> Um, I tell everyone to bring a hammock. So if you wake up and you're sweltering in your tent, you can go to the grove or like the rest stop, I think is what they called it last year, and take a nap. Um, it's like the best way to recharge. That seems simple, uh, but boy, that hammock thing is a lifesaver. And I've said, yeah. you know, I would say early on, like, why are we throwing up all these hammocks? We had a lot of trees in our old camp spot. Like, yeah. A yeah. embarrassing amount of awesome trees. I was like, well, <laughs> what do we really need a hammock for? And then, like, two days later, I'm like, uh, don't touch me. I'm in the hammock. <laughs> yeah, it's peaceful. Gone. <laughs> um, go through the tower entrance line. Um, do do the high five live once, you know, but go ahead and, and check the extra five minutes down to the tower line so you don't have to well, stand in line. Except for, for an that hour. year, they didn't give us the tower entrance line, yeah. if you remember yeah. that year. <laughs> Well, that was a disaster. So I know. I think we'll have. It. I think we have it this year. By all I, I think they Brad learned this. Brad says it's back. It yeah, better Brad be Parker. It better. My be. last. My last tip is to invest in a waterproof like picnic blanket for Santa Rosa. 
Because if you put a tapestry down, like it's going to get wet it's when the mask. dew starts. Yeah. yeah. So um, keep your clothes dry. Keep it warm. Get a waterproof blanket. Do you do the locker? Uh, no. <laughs> well, the old fi- the old fish line too. Be whatever you do, take care of your shoes. That's a yeah. that's that's a big one. Shoes are huge. That yeah. was uh, from Socks the very shoes. start. That yeah. was from the very first year, that was a big one. Don't get, uh, especially if it rains, don't wear something that's going to get stuck in a mud sinkhole and then you're barefoot for the rest of the Oh, it's so easy to think, man, these are the most comfortable flip-flops I've ever had. Yeah, double, triple check Well, get ready for a nightmare, dude. Yeah. (laughs) Until. One time I actually forgot tennis shoes. Um, I I trusted a a group mate to grab them, but he only grabbed my bag. And so I had to borrow friend shoes for the weekend that were two sizes too big. You will never make that mistake again, will you? Nope. Nope. No. <laughs> Put see, an extra pair of tennis shoes in your bag. <laughs> here's my tip, especially it's uh what is it? It's April twenty first. Start now. Put your stuff in the middle of a room. Just lay start it all out. Start doing it. inventory. Yeah. Inventory. Touch it, feel it, know it's there. Wake up tomorrow <laughs> and do it again because you will forget something. And, right. Uh, like I said, we can drive back home, or I mean, you can go to a Walmart, but if you've driven 13 hours and you forgot tennis shoes, you know, or a tent or shade. Yeah. All right. Hey, just drove 13 hours. Let's go to Walmart now down the yeah. street. Uh, which you can do. You <laughs> certainly can. But but it's, or yeah. tent poles. Who was it told us they got all the way there and thought the other guy had the poles? <laughs> oh my Many god. Times. Yeah. That is rookie. The tent, rookie. But no pole. That is rookie. Yeah. Rookie. All right, Lucy, who are you who are you looking forward to seeing? I mean, we know uh, uh, Josiah, but who, who? Chapel Grown, Cage the Elephant, Megan the Stallion, Some in Line. Um, I'm I'm pretty excited about this year. The overall yeah. lineup when you first heard it was it underwhelming to you? Like it's been to many of us. We've grown on a lot of it, and as we always talk about, we don't care who's there. But when you first heard it to now, has it grown on you? more or are you just you good with it from the jump um i like fred again enough so i'm pretty excited about that show i i do enjoy edm um red hot chili peppers played my first year so i kind of wish there was a little bit you and me both yeah (laughs) um but i i missed half of that set um like going to the bathroom (laughs) um so i i'm excited to like see the whole thing potentially (laughs) Um, I doubled down on this because of this dumb joke within the show. Sorry, go ahead. I was there, Brian. I saw it, dude. (laughs) The pretty lights, like, what stage Thursday? We'll be excited. All right. Well, congratulations on the tickets, and I hope you're – have you told the other couple yet? Um, Well, I was going to kind of send them this link, maybe. Ah, Um, Look at that. (laughs) Always thinking – Tell you, if you, all right, you got a, a, a future in PR if you want to get into it. Or do, you, well, you, thank you. You've got yes, the you basics do. down. Now, it's a difficult biz- industry, but you got the basics down. And excellent call for real. No j- joking around about it. I mean, we, um, we're we always looking for good content in any way, and, and, and we enjoy, you know, listening to, you know, to people just calling for whatever we're, we're, we're looking for. And, it was a it immediately jumped off to all of us that was like this is a very well put together and and thought thoroughly thought <laughs> out call and right. that that yeah. was really cool and that and that's not the exact reason you won um I don't guess I don't know but 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 that no there was that I mean there was other calls we got a lot of good we calls narrowed it down it was, we, narrowed we narrowed it down, it down. Yeah. what did we get a hundred plus calls I mean at least wow. hundred yeah. again yeah. thanks to everybody out there for participating it yeah. make, it mm-hmm. makes this show more fun for us and I hopefully hopefully more fun for everybody else as, to, as well for sure we probably may we may drop some more in later uh just because we got that many and they're good yeah. calls and you know the content is right it's go check out this band right so that's and we, we and if, if any year which there's been plenty of them but if any year for sure this is one we needed some help and uh, <laughs> you just mentioned yeah. chapel <laughs> roan i was just reading about her coachella set uh just mm-hmm. an hour ago and more and more read into her, and I've th- she's got a couple of songs that you can't not like. They're so catchy and so they're pop. They're out of my normal uh, 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 wavelength, but they're great. I mean, it's good stuff. Never would have heard of that 
if we weren't doing these kinds of segments and it's uh it's yep. very it's very cool for me and i know for i think i speak for all of us when i say us all right i'm a, i have to put you on the spot lucy uh-huh he proposed last year uh-huh they have a stage called Matra Mooney or something. <laughs> Me and yeah. Taco messed around and almost got married yeah. ourselves. We are, we are you know, my, yeah. my well, dad's what? a Bonnaroovian, but I don't think I want to bring all the grandparents along, you know. Yeah. Uh, we're okay. we're getting yeah. married in December. Hey, come on, uh, 13 right. hours, but... uh, Auntie uh, <laughs> May. Come on. Yeah, we're yeah. putting you up in a tent. It'll be great. Yeah. It's designer <laughs> tent. <laughs> <laughs> all right well i had to ask congratulations yeah. to you both that's Thank awesome you. december in san antonio i assume right yeah and bernie which is a little bit outside of san antonio nice. but really excited all right well congratulations we look forward to seeing you on the farm I, Thank I hope you. to uh hug and howdy and all that stuff so all right We'll talk to you soon. Thank yeah. you again. And tell everybody in San Antonio, uh, you know, Goober says, hey, I guess. <laughs> All right. Can do. Thank, Thank you, guys. You, Lucy. All right. So there you go. That was fun. Um, another. We say it every every time. There's so many people that have great Bonnaroo stories. I mean, could, I can't imagine getting engaged i mean she went she went to her first one in 17 with a guy she as she said was crushing on crushing on yeah and, hey uh, yeah i think that is wonderful you know how many times awesome? you know how many times i thought i could pull that off that was never never works <laughs> yeah. never works and, uh, uh so good for her for seeing that. i mean that's that's some looking into the uh you know past right now and even tomorrow so uh yeah be beautiful stuff man it's always fun stories mm -hmm. and then they got engaged at even bonnaroo. the bad stories at bonnaroo are can be yeah. fun good tell told stories that's certainly one of the uh, highly successful ones that was a lot of fun listening to her and um she just like i said another you know just like us just love it just uh i don't i can't imagine making that 13 hour drive but She'll get tired yeah. of it eventually. She's still very yeah, nice. Can't imagine. She's young and yeah. vibrant and healthy. Well, the goal there is to uh, like make us. enough money you can get an airplane ticket. Well, that's <laughs> the tough in. part. Let's find out where all that money is <laughs> or something. Yeah. But uh, anyway, that was a lot of fun. So back to the uh, our our next contest. And like I said, we're still figuring out the details. Uh, I know this. I've got a basement full of stuff I want to get rid of. I've got uh, wet podcast T-shirts, koozies, that kind of stuff. Uh, Brian and Russ and I were kind of talking about things we've collected over the years. Maybe we can put into a prize pack. Don't know what it's going to look like entirely. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's not It's not going to knock your, sh your your socks off. Like we're, and we're not talking about anything with any high, high dollar value. Maybe a couple could have a little, depending on how you wanted to work eBay. But just of all, <laughs> I mean, if we assume, I assume, if you listen to this show regularly, then this festival means a lot to you. So the history of this festival means a lot to you. The um, reminiscing of, of years before you came. The years after you you didn't make it during the middle when you came back, newspaper articles, the Bonnaroo Beacon uh, from the, the uh, Relics Magazine, that was a huge thing forever. I, I think it's done and long gone now. That an actual pr small printing press. Yeah, we used where to they get do, a daily paper. Where they would do daily papers that did write-ups mm -hmm. on the shows from the night before. I mean, nobody was doing that except until Relics took it to other places around the country. And this is 15 years ago. Uh, bandanas, uh, programs like when you used to pull in and they'd ham you a, a nice thick. Uh, they used to be bigger, but then they get down to about this size. Programs, I got several of those. You're not getting this, but it's my 2005 nice. koozie, fourth annual. Nice. There, figured I'd put that one. I don't even like using it because I don't want to stretch it too much. <laughs> but um, I feel like we could throw together a lot of yeah, fun stuff that something. I think uh, I think people would like and. As a way, as a carrot to get, uh, you know, give us a ring and give us uh, give us some insights into any. It could be anything festival related. I'd like it to be closer to Bonnaroo, maybe the Sphere, if you headed out that way. But yeah, just 
good, We've bad, had a lot of fun. Uh, good, bad, ugly. Um, you know, you whatever you got. Yeah, if you got a question for us or somebody else, maybe. Um, yeah, we just want to hear from people. It's been fun well, to do that. We do, but it's we could narrow it down to a little scope just to get people focused on what we're asking for. We, we're looking for if you got Bonnaroo tips, like if you got a killer hack that you do every year for camping, that or could traveling, work too. Um, we want to hear that because we're going to do a whole show on tips and tricks and how tos and and want to and want to include as many of you as possible. Yeah, yeah. Do's and get, as, get as many hints as we can. Um, I mean, we I'm, we like want to answer Brian, questions. If you've got a question that hasn't been addressed, then give us a call and ask your question. We can get that answered as well. Yeah, I mean, Brian, you've been every year. I've been, been since seven. Like to think I, we know what we're doing, but uh, that tip from Tara last week, uh, time stamping your text. Yeah. Never thought of it. Great tip. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great There's tip. always little. Uh, it, it, this one's kind of old now, but like. Putting the the schedule on as your screensaver on your phone, or so you know, or or, or the screensaver on your phone is all your contact information. Right. Like that was something that came up many years ago. That was a way to protect your phone. And I thought, huh, yeah, what Lucy's, a what insane idea! And I never Lucy's, thought of it. Lucy's tip yeah. today about uh, don't pick the you know the water fountain, the mushroom. Pick a pick an empty you know a relatively empty vending store to do your meetup. But, yeah, I mean, there's all kinds of tips like that. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, I'd love to hear that. Um, anyway, and we'll you know we'll play some of them. That's the beauty of these phone calls is we get to play them so you we can uh, hear it from you guys and not just read it. So all right, uh, what else, guys? Anything else? I think that about covers it. Um, as far as also the phone calls, they don't need to be too overly the top theatrical or anything. Uh, but if you got some good information, uh, come with, come at it, and then I, I feel yeah. confident we'll put together something that uh, a, a prize. We'll do this probably all the way up until, till the first week of June, and then uh, at, as soon as the festival's over, probably yeah, probably keep, send keep that it out. Succinct. This is this is a voicemail line, so like yeah, you know, voicemail is what max two minutes, two and a half. I don't know yeah, what the limit that's is, a, but if you keep going and going, it is going to cut you off. So keep it. To the point and, and it, keep it short. If you send a two minute voicemail, it better be the best story ever, or I'm going to cut it to at least a minute. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but but yeah, uh, I look forward to it. Our, the 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 last calls we got, we got so many good ones. It was great. So mm -hmm. many good ones, and um, looking forward to do it again. It's a lot of fun for us, and I think for everybody else, just to have more uh, perspective from people who have camped in different spots Absolutely. all over what, what if the, you're the guy who got stuck i don't know if that little bridge is still all the way out there in the back where they added that additional plot of land like in 2005 or 6 and they built this like bridge and it was like this, over this creek or something i don't know if anything that lives but it used to have a nickname and if you got stuck out there it was like oh no <laughs> i want uh, this but People made the best of it, and some of the best stories yeah. come out of those. We're not even in Coffee County anymore, it doesn't right. feel like, over <laughs> yeah. here. I don't think that's really a thing anymore. Just anything like that. Uh, and, and, and you know, do's and don'ts and, and survival tips. Yeah, Ross, it yeah, may be so opposite of what you're... you're six, six, seven, seven, eight, seven, seven is the phone number. Uh, yeah. Just as a reminder, that's we're keeping the same phone number, but... Yeah, we'll have a new uh, yeah, we we'll have a new to contest to go. Yep, and uh, I know Russ, you're you're trying to fine tune the uh, question, but I'm just sitting here thinking maybe if you even if you have questions for somebody else, maybe people with the, that run the festival, that we could be the intermediary if you have a question you'd like to ask them. Like that Rick Farman, open. damn it, what are you yeah, doing over there? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Live Nation C three, yeah, maybe ask. We'll see. We'll try. I, yeah. I'm game. Maybe we can get an answer for you. So, yeah, shoot your shot. I mean, try. Yeah, anything you gotta, you want to bring up with us. You're, you know, you want to talk about us. Yeah, that's fine too. Yeah, come on. Yeah, I like that too. Yeah. All right, <laughs> thanks guys. Good show. Yeah, it was fun. Consequence Podcast Network.